Hi, I'm Edwin Gardner and I'm a fine art painter and visual artist. I've been painting on and off for say the last 20 years. I've mostly been working, uh, well depicting uh, landscape and interiors and I guess the genre of the work is perhaps categorised as sort of romantic. There's certainly influences from symbolism from artists like uh, Erléon Redon. So I think that there's um, definitely a bit of a French influence in my painting and I think that's partly because I'm very interested in colour and I really like the way that a lot of French painters uh, have used colour in the past. So initially I um, painted fairly abstractly and, uh, and that was because I just wanted people to focus more on the sort of language of the paint, uh, the way the painting feels the atmosphere it was sort of giving off. I think once you start depicting something you can identify, they tend to focus on that and you know this is a painting about a landscape, this is a painting about an interior uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and they maybe don't not focusing on the way the painting was made and the choice of colours, which is really what the painting is about. But um, of course after a while uh, it became really difficult to constantly invent things and uh, and I actually really enjoy uh, creating pictorial space which always refers to figuration. You know, figurative work, um, I'm still pursuing the things that I want to pursue in terms of the language that I'm using, it's just in more in a figurative format. I guess in terms of art politics and how I'm positioned in reference to that, uh, I would be perceived as being more of a modernist than a postmodernist or a conceptualist. And that's really not to say that uh, my work doesn't have ideas. It's, it's more to say that I don't want to use the style or the language uh, that works that are considered postmodern or conceptualist uh, use. So I, I like to do my own thing. Actually, uh, used to really hate that term postmodernism for a long time uh, and that was because uh, the arts establishment were using uh, that sort of uh, terminology to justify the style or direction that they wanted um, art to go in. But uh, once I actually started reading postmodernism, uh, reading some of the um, theory, uh, I realised that actually Postmodernism's a really great improvement uh, on Western philosophy, uh, really quite possibly the best instalment so far of Western philosophy. Uh, and it actually had very little, if nothing, to do with what the arts establishment were calling postmodernism in art. The reason why I'm uh, more sympathetic to postmodernist literature or postmodernist theory, not that I've completely extensively read it, uh, is that it's the most similar to my own philosophical beliefs in terms of Taoism and it's a lot more compatible with uh, some of the ideas and concepts in Taoism and that is really the philosophy or thinking that informs me personally and informs my work. So initially I um, started my career with a four-year degree at Canberra School of Art and I spent uh, most of my time in the painting department, although in my final year I switched departments to uh, graphic investigation, which is a drawing based department. So the following parts of the video are really a little bit of a synopsis of my career and some sort of general comments about um, painting. So these images uh, coming up are the images from my graduate show. They're just a sample of the work that I did. I guess uh, they're quite uh, reminiscent of my experiences uh, when I went to the art school in Prague and they're sort of quite romantic in nature. And uh, while I was at the art school in Prague, I studied in the graphic studio under Vladimir Kokolia. So, um, after art school, I pretty much uh, moved to Melbourne straight away um, and got a studio in, I think, Flinders Lane. And, and that's where I sat down with this book, Janice Eaton. Uh, so, 
the reason why I had to research with the color theory with Jahan is simply because I just didn't learn uh, color theory at uh, art school. I know that's uh, amazing. Art school is not really about learning painting technique. Uh, when you think that that would be the central thing that you would learn. I mean, I did actually have uh, quite decent lecturers in my first year, and they were the, but they were all the people that didn't have tenure and were sort of brought into the school uh, with fresh ideas and, you know, actually motivated to teach the students uh, some actual technique, uh, which was great. And, and, you know, obviously a lot of the terms that I use in some of the videos, like, chromatic greys and these sorts of things are actually the terms that, that, that I got from them. But after first year, I, I, the, the, the quality of teaching was very poor. I mean, I think, I think the lecturers was more, they were much more concerned about getting you to conform to a sort of contemporary style or a curatorial style that they felt that, that, that we needed to conform to, otherwise we're never going to get a grant, we we're never going to get an exhibition. Uh, in government-run galleries uh, with these sort of arts establishment and and if you could form to that then we'll be right and that's to be honest that's largely true I mean if you conform to the prescribed type of art making that's uh, that the art establishment that want you to make you, you do have a career path and maybe because I went against that uh, is the reason why I'm sitting in front of you now <laughs> But um, this is a very common experience. Most people, uh, their art school experience is that they actually don't get taught a lot of actual hands-on technical skills about painting. Uh, and I know that's totally bizarre, but that's often been my experience talking to other people uh, and occasionally um, it's a different experience, but very rarely. Uh, so, coming back to the... So, now, it didn't solve all the problems that I wanted to, to solve in terms of um, gaining this very uh, high degree of competency in my painting in terms of the colour. Uh, and that's largely because the Eden is pretty theoretical. And Eden himself uh, not is not a particularly great painter. I mean, he's a decent painter. But what you find is that he's using the lines and structure to hold the painting together. He's not, and um, uh, he's not uh, joining the colour exclusively through the use of hue. It's not a particularly sophisticated use of colour. He didn't. There's no Van Gogh. He is no uh, Gauguin. It took a long time from to go from understanding the, the theory to. Uh, being able to practically apply it in complicated situations such as paintings. It's, if I can make an analogy of, um, say, uh, learning grammar uh, helps you with writing, but it doesn't necessarily make you a good writer. And that's a bit like learning colour theory, it doesn't necessarily make you a great painter. It helps, it definitely helps, but it is a very big jump to go from colour theory to painting with some real talent. With uh, I'm hoping to sort of improve upon uh, Johanna Sitton's uh, work on colour theory and painting practice to make that jump a lot easier for you, the next generation of painters. Uh, to have more than what I got at art school and to uh, master painting at a faster rate than, than, it, than it took me.